The accidental discovery that saved the world. Once upon a time, in a land of germs, sneezes, and sore throats where people use a dye from a small scratch, there lived a messy scientist named, drum roll please, Sir Alexander Fleming. Wanna learn without the stress? Hell a welcome to Katukuni. Yes, this is a real story about how a man who couldn't clean his lab bench properly ended up saving millions of lives. This is the story of the accidental discovery of antibiotics. So sit tight, grab your moldy bread, or don't. And let's time travel to the early 1900s. Let me set the scene. Back in the day, I'm talking early 1900s, people could literally die from a paper cut. I'm not kidding. You get a splinter? Game over. Why? Because of bacterial infections. And doctors had no clue how to stop them. No penicillin. No amoxicillin. Not even that pink syrup that tasted like bubblegum you got as a kid. Just leeches, hope, and questionable herbal teas. Surgery? Dangerous. Childbirth? Risky. Even shaving could end up in an obituary. Germs were running wild, like teenagers home alone. Medicine needed a hero, but not the hero expected. Who was this Fleming guy anyway? Enter Alexander Fleming, a Scottish bacteriologist. That's just a fancy way of saying he liked to study tiny invisible creatures that made people sick. Now, Alex wasn't your average lab guy. No, no. He was, how do I say this politely? Um, creatively messy. His desk looked like a science experiment exploded. His lab looked like a crime scene. Petri dishes stacked like Jenga towers. But sometimes mess leads to magic. Okay, now here's where it gets wild. It's September 1928 and Fleming, like all good scientists, decides to go on vacation. Because honestly, even bacteria researchers need to hit the beach sometimes. But here's the thing, our boy Fleming, he didn't clean up before he left. He just dropped his lab coat, left his cultures lying around, and pieced out like a university student after finals. Big mistake, or big blessing? Fast forward two weeks, Fleming returns with a tan. So Fleming walks back into the lab, probably humming Scottish tunes, sipping tea. We glances at one of his old Petri dishes, NBM. He sees something strange, something weird, something moldy. Right in the middle of his dish, this mold had colonized like it owned the place. But here's the crazy part. The bacteria around the mold were dead, gone, zapped. But everywhere else, the bacteria were partying like it was 1929. Fleming was like, wait a minute, did this mold just murder my bacteria? Now, most people would have thrown the dish away. But Fleming? He was like, huh, that's interesting, because that's exactly how science starts kids. He did some tests and guess what? That mold was penicillium notatum, and it was releasing a substance that killed bacteria, but not human cells. Fleming had discovered the first true antibiotic, penicillin, the first real weapon against deadly bacterial infections. But hold up, did the world jump up and thank him? Did people start injecting penicillin like confetti? Nope, not even close. Turns out, penicillin was hard to make, super unstable, and Fleming wasn't a chemist. He couldn't figure out how to mass produce it. So penicillin just sat there in a dusty journal article. Until, fast forward to the late 1930s and 40s. World War II was raging. Soldiers were dying from infected wounds. And a group of scientists in Oxford, Howard Florey, Ernst Chain, and Norman Heatley, found Fleming's work and were like, wait a minute, this stuff could save lives. These guys formed the penicillin dream team. They found a way to grow the mold faster, purify the drug, and scale it up, using fermentation tanks, corn liquor, and even moldy melons. By 1944, penicillin was being mass-produced, and for the first time in history, a wound didn't mean a death sentence. Antibiotics had entered the chat. Fleming went on to win the Nobel Prize in 1945 alongside Florian Chain. But he also warned the world, saying, if you use antibiotics too much, bacteria will fight back. And boy was he right. Now we have antibiotic resistance, superbugs that laugh at our meds like LOL. Nice try. So what did we learn today? 1. 
Alexander Fleming accidentally discovered penicillin thanks to his messy habits. 2. Penicillin was the first true antibiotic, and it changed the world. 3. Antibiotics kill bacteria, not viruses. 4. Overusing antibiotics leads to resistant superbugs. 5. Never skip your full dose, even if you feel better. So the next time you take an antibiotic, remember, you're swallowing a piece of science history that started with a moldy dish. If you like this episode, smash that like button, mold that subscribe button, and don't forget to comment below. What would you name your bacteria-fighting superhero mold? Until next time, stay healthy, stay curious, and always wash your hands. Peace. Cartoon Clinique